event is also mentioned by the 3rd century Christian apologist Origen and the 6th century writer Philippon. A Syrian Stoic philosopher named Mara Bar Seraphion wrote a letter from prison to his son sometime after AD 70. In the letter, he compares Jesus to the philosophers Socrates and Pythagoras. He wrote, What advantage did the Athenians gain from putting Socrates to death? Famine and plague came upon them as a judgment for their crime. What advantage did the men of Samos gain from burning Pythagoras? In a moment their land was covered with sand. What advantage did the Jews gain from executing their wise king? It was just after that that their kingdom was abolished. God justly avenged these three wise men. The Athenians died of hunger. The Simeons were overwhelmed by the sea. The Jews, ruined and driven from their land, live in complete dispersion. But Socrates did not die for good. He lived on in the statue of Hera. Nor did the wise king die for good. He lived on in the teaching which he had given. This letter refers to the gospel statement that was placed above the cross of Jesus. The writer also mentioned that the Jews suffered judgments of God after executing their king, which most likely is a reference to the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple by Rome in A.D. 70. Gnosticism flourished from the 2nd to the 4th centuries A.D. Although these Gnostics were influenced by the New Testament, their teachings were pronounced heretical and viewed as such by the church. However, several Gnostic Gospels testify of Jesus Christ. One of these heretical teachers asserts that the Son of God came in the flesh in his Gospel of Truth. For when they had seen him and heard him, he granted them to taste him and to smell him and to touch the beloved Son when he had appeared instructing them about the Father, for he came by means of fleshly appearance. Another is the Gospel of Thomas, which is usually dated from around A.D. 140 to 200. In this Gnostic Gospel, Jesus said, It is I who am the light which is above them all. It is I who am from the all. From me did the all come forth, and unto me did the all extend. Split a piece of wood, and I am there. Lift up the stone, and you will find me there. Although biblical Christianity does not endorse pantheism, this heretical gospel of Thomas confirmed that Jesus identified himself as the Son of God. When the King James Bible was published in 1611, the oldest Old Testament manuscript used by the King James translators was dated approximately A.D. 1100. Obviously, that old manuscript was a copy of a copy of a copy. Nevertheless, in 1947, the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls in the Qumran Caves near the Dead Sea yielded over a thousand priceless manuscripts dating before A.D. 68. Every complete book of the Old Testament was discovered except for the book of Esther. These manuscripts were virtually identical to the A.D. 1100 translation that was used for the King James Bible. For example, the scroll of the prophet Isaiah has been carbon dated to a range of between 335 B.C. and A.D. 107 and was virtually identical to the King James translations aside from a tiny number of spelling translations. Along with these Old Testament manuscripts were scrolls that contained references to the New Testament and Jesus of Nazareth. One scroll discovered in Cave 4 refers to the Messiah as the Son of God and the Son of the Most High. Dated much later than the Old Testament scrolls, the New Testament fragments were dated between A.D. 50 to A.D. 100. This is consistent with the time of the writings of the Gospels. Aside from the Dead Sea Scrolls, there are also a number of Jewish references to the ministry of Jesus of Nazareth as well. Josephus, the Jewish historian, is known for historical works such as Jewish antiquities finished in A.D. 93 or 94. One passage reads, Now there was about this time Jesus, a wise man, if it be lawful to call him a man, for he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over to them both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. He was the Christ, and when Pilate 
at the suggestion of the principal men among us, had condemned him to the cross. Those that loved him at first did not forsake him, for he appeared to them alive again the third day. As the divine prophets have foretold, these and ten thousand other wonderful things concerning him, and the tribe of Christians, so named from him, are not extinct to this day. This passage has raised heated debate among scholars because Josephus, a non-Christian Jew, makes statements about Jesus that an Orthodox Jew would not normally affirm. While some Christian additions may have been obviously foreign to the testimonium, it still contains a great deal of historical truth that Josephus could have easily documented. In fact, the vast majority of scholars do not dismiss the account as a forgery, but believe that Josephus did mention Jesus in this passage, but later insertions were made by a Christian scribe. Hence, the statements about Jesus that a non-Christian like Josephus wouldn't have made. But the style of Josephus is authentic. The term wise man is typical for Josephus's writings. The accusation that this text is a forgery is an exaggeration. Origen even quoted Flavius Josephus in AD 245. He said, Flavius Josephus who wrote the antiquities of the Jews in 20 books, when wishing to exhibit the cause why the people suffered so great misfortunes that even the temple was raised to the ground, said that these things happened to them in accordance with the wrath of God, in consequence of the things which they had dared to do against James, the brother of Jesus, who is called Christ. And the wonderful thing is that though he did not accept Jesus as Christ, he gave testimony that the righteousness of James was so great. And he says that the people thought that they had suffered these things because of James. The Babylonian Talmud asserts that Jesus, or Yeshu, was indeed a rabbi with followers. It says, Yeshu had five disciples, Matai, Nikai, Netzer, Buni, and Toda. While Matai may be a reference to Matthews, the names of the others identified could be any of hundreds of disciples that followed Jesus. We also read in the Talmud of the crucifixion of Jesus, or Yeshu. It has been taught, on the eve of Passover they hanged Yeshu. But not having found anything in his favor, they hanged him on the eve of Passover. Another version of this text says, Yeshu the Nazarene, making the link to Jesus much stronger. The word hanged is another way of referring to the crucifixion. The reference that the crucifixion occurred on the eve of Passover agrees with the account in John 19.14. Obviously, Jesus was a real person. But who is Jesus? Was Jesus a liar, a lunatic, or was Jesus Lord? This question may be answered by his resurrection. As demonstrated earlier by several historical accounts, Jesus was crucified. This is for certain. Lucian, the Greek satirist, wrote, The Christians, you know, worship a man to this day. The distinguished personage who introduced their novel rites and was crucified on that account. With our modern medical knowledge, and given the nature of a scourging and a Roman crucifixion, it is safe to say that survival is highly unlikely, if not impossible. Moreover, one of the Roman soldiers thrust a spear into the side of Jesus after he died. John the disciple described the blood and water flowing from this wound. We also know that from today's medical knowledge that the water flowing from Jesus' side was most likely due to the rupturing of the sac surrounding the heart called the pericardium. This would produce the water and blood just as John described in his gospel centuries ago. Thus, with the reliable historical accounts of eyewitnesses and other non-Christian accounts of the crucifixion, we know that Jesus undoubtedly died on the cross. Additionally, the gospels provide embarrassing testimonies of the disciples and the women in relation to Jesus' resurrection. Their initial disbelief is documented in the gospel accounts. The principle of embarrassment supports the authenticity. 
it would be highly unlikely that the disciples or the early Christians who highly respected them would invent scenarios which, in hindsight, cast